It's becoming interesting. This is the second part of the series, The Levels of Reason, where I explain how reason works and how it can help us to understand and practice better and eventually feel and master the compass. If you didn't watch the first part, you should go now and come back here. As always, I'll wait for you. Vamono. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you sing flamenco, you play guitar, cajon or palmas, or you just want to understand better how flamenco works, let's continue together our exploration of rhythm. As an introduction, let's do an exercise together, you, me and El Tito. At a slow tempo, here it's 90 BPM, we are just going to clap our hands in a three beats cycle, like a three beats Lego with the accent on the first beat. This is the main level of rhythm as described in the first video. Tito, vamono. One, two, three, one. And we'll sing first one note per beat with a ta. Ta. And now two notes per beat. And three notes per beat. And four notes. And so on. We have just experienced the two main levels of rhythm. The level of the clapping, the main level or the Lego level, and the level of singing, the sub level. The sub level is when we look inside the Lego, what happens between each beat. So what happens is that we can divide the time or the space between each beat, but we want to divide them equally. It's like a cake cutting, okay? We want to make sure that everyone has an equal slice. The slices are the subdivisions. Subdivisions, sub because of sub level and divisions because of divisions. The question here is very simple. How many subdivisions do we want in each beat? And here again, as on the main level of rhythm, we have two big choices, two different words. Do we divide into two or into three? If we divide our beat into two, we have this. This is a beat. One, two, one, two, one, two. If we divide into three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Equal slices, remember. So we have our two main ways of dividing the beats into two or into three. And from here we can double the subdivisions. It means if we started dividing into two, we can also divide into four, into eight, into 16, and so on. If we started dividing into three, then we can divide into six, into 12, into 24. But then after that, we'll have speed problems. In practice, when we want to sing rhythm, when we want to sing the subdivisions, we don't use the numbers because it's not easy and it's not very musical. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four doesn't work. So very often we use onomatopoeias. And I'm sure you heard flamenco dancers, they do this all the time to sing their steps. I'm sure you've heard things like this, like There is no strict system. You just use sounds onomatopoeia to reproduce rhythmic uh, phrases. The idea is just reproducing sounds to recreate the uh, melody of the steps, the rhythmic melody. And this is a very important 
concept. It's very important for the dancer to imagine their footwork as a melody with an intention, a direction and dynamics. It's not only technique and speed and endurance and golpes on the ground as loud as possible. No, it needs to have an intention, dynamics to tell something. We need to talk much more about that, but it's very interesting and it can improve so much our musicality. If you really want an organized system for this, you can go and check Konakol in Indian Carnatic music. And this is just mind blowing. Here I give you ideas, elements of uh, things that we use in flamenco to sing the rhythm. For the subdivisions in two, we can use taka. Instead of one, two, one, two, we sing taka, taka. It's much better, right? Instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we sing taka, 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 taka. Instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we use taka, 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 and so on. Let's try these different subdivisions, two, four, and eight, on a three beats compass at very slow tempo. So we have time to sing and to understand everything that's happening. One, two, three. Ta, 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 ta. For the subdivision in three, we can use tico ta. So instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, we use tico ta, tico ta. Instead of six, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ticota, 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 ticota. And instead of 12, counting 12, it's a bit crazy. So we do ticota, 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 ta. Again, same thing. Let's try this on a three beats compass, slow tempo, 45 BPM. You can see that the more subdivisions we have, the closer they are to each other and the faster they go because they all need to fit in the same time in the same space. To use another metaphor, this is like the flow rate of a faucet. The more you open it, the more water you get in a given time. Here's the same thing. We have like dripping, like plick, plock, plick, or open the faucet completely. By the way, one interesting thing to know is that the word rhythm comes from ancient Greek rhythmos and the verb reo, that means to flow. You could ask me, so what if we want to divide our beats in other odd numbers, like into five or seven or nine? So it exists, but it's not really common and in flamenco, not at all. So let's stick for now to the two main uh, rhythmic words, two or three. Obviously, this works for music in general, not only for flamenco, but we can apply this directly to our flamenco compasses. So let's do a few exercises together and practice the variation of the two levels. We set up El Tito with 130 BPM. We keep a constant flow rate, like three notes per beat, triplets, but we'll change the type of compass. So let's start with the compass de tango with three notes per beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Tico ta, 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 tico ta. And the same with the 12 beats compass de solea or alegría, for example. 
7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, tico, ta, 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 tico, tico, ta, 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 And here, see how it becomes much more interesting if we accentuate the beats of the compass we are in. If we switch off El Tito and we keep singing without palmas, we should be able to identify the cycle to understand the compass. For tango, for example, tico ta 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 ta. O por alegría, tico ta 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 tico You can feel the compass only with this. And here it's very important because we start to talk about musical phrasing. If you are dancing or playing guitar, for example, if you have a good phrasing, it makes everything much easier for the other musician to follow you, to understand what you are doing. And the audience also will appreciate much better, even if they don't really know why. It's the same when we speak, we stress words and syllables and we emphasize part of the sentence. Otherwise, it would be very boring. We'll talk a lot about this later. Second exercise, we choose one specific compass, like this 12 beats Solea or Alegria compass, and we will vary the flow rate, the subdivisions. Amon. 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, taca, 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 tico, ta, 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 tico, but not necessarily at the beginning of the compass. For example, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, taka, 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 tico, ta, tico, ta, tico, ta, tico, ta, taka, 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 tico, ta, tico, ta, tico, ta, tico, ta, taka, 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 tico, ta, tico, ta, taka, 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 taka. You understand the idea, right? Generally, the main level, the first level, the Lego level, or the Palmas level, is steady, okay? It's regular. We stick to it. It's a cycle of three beats, of four beats, compass de tango, compass de cigarilla, compass de whatever, but we stick to it from the beginning till the end. The speed, the tempo, is also usually stable. I mean, we have a variation of speed, of tempo. In a baile, we have subidas, acceleration or deceleration, or just an abrupt change of tempo, it happens. But just in general, let's say that we want a stable, steady tempo. The sub-level, on the other hand, what's happening uh, between each beat is changing all the time, okay? We just keep alternating between different subdivisions into two, into three, into six, into four, into eight. We change this all the time. And then we mute notes and we accentuate others. And that's how we create musical rhythmic phrases. And this is what we'll explore in the next videos of this series. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it could help if you like this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends, leave me a comment and tell me what you want me to talk about. Let me know what kind of exercises you like so I can make more. And also go to flamencomaps.com to know more about my method, my classes, my courses. And I also have a free gift prepared for you. It's there waiting for you. So I see you there. Till then, don't forget, learn flamenco, make it fun, make it different, make it yours.